Okay. All right. So for today's lesson, we're going to start with another whole new chapter for A2 syllabus. Huh? So we already completed two chapters so far. So we already completed chapter one, Lattice Energy, and chapter two, which is the Entropy and Gibbs Free Energy. So this will be the chapter three uh, for our A2 syllabus. Huh? So this chapter is called Electrochemistry. Okay. So actually, we learn about electrochemistry in AS as well. You will notice that some of the chapter you will learn in AS and also A2. Yeah. So they kind of like overlap between each and other. The only, the, only, the only differences is that um, in AS, you learn something more basic, but in A2, everything go deeper. That's it, okay? So let's do a quick recap. <clears throat> in AS, what you learn about electrochemistry, you learn about redox. Huh? What is the concept for redox, okay? How to use the oxidation number to find out whether the reaction is oxidation or reduction. How to write the half equation to see whether we donate or, re, uh, or receive electron. So after we know donate or receive electron, how to know it is oxidation or reduction. That's what we learned in AS. Huh? Then we also learned a concept called disproportionation in AS. Okay, what do we mean by disproportionation? Disproportionation means the same substance undergo both oxidation and reduction process. This is considered quite special. Because normally, the substance who undergo oxidation and the substance who undergo reduction, they are two different things. Yeah? But for this proportionation, the same filler, the same substance undergo oxidation as well as reduction. Yeah? So if you don't know what is this, I think it is better for you to do a quick revision yeah, for your AS. So the third one, in AS, we also learn some of the equation, they are very hard to balance. So we can use oxidation number to balance the equation. So the concept is the total increase in the oxidation number in the end must be balanced with the total decrease in the oxidation number. So all these things you learn in AS. Again, if you think there's any of this subtopic <clears throat> you've kind of like forgotten already or a little bit rusty, so I think it's always a good idea for you to do your revision. Huh? Sometimes you don't over-focus on your A2 and you kind of forgot on your AS. So you need to always revise your AS whenever you feel it is necessary. Okay, so let's look on our A2 topic for today. Eh? So for A2, under the electrochemistry, this is a long chapter. This is a long chapter, all right? So we have a few things that we will learn. So we will learn something about voltage cell. So we will learn something about electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cell, another name is called electrolysis. Huh? Electrolysis, huh? okay? Then we will, do, we will do some calculation by using charge and also by using electrons. So these are the three main components for electrochemistry under A2, okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> we will start with voltage cell first. Huh? We will start with voltage cell. Okay, so first and foremost, you need to know voltage cell, we also can call it as a chemical cell. So when you see the word chemical cell or voltage cell, they are the same thing. Sometimes they call it as electrochemical cell. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Huh? They just use different naming only. Yeah, so why we need to learn about voltage cell because i believe that all of you should heard about voltage cell you should know something about it in your high school because everyone learn about voltage cell in high school no matter you are from spm or you are from igcse you definitely heard about voltage cell before so what, what is the function for voltage cell voltage cell is used to produce electricity okay you can use to produce some electric or we can call generate some voltage huh? generate some voltage. So let's do a quick revision for what you learned in high school. Huh? Okay, this is something about high school. In your SPM or IGCSE, back in your high school, this is how we set up a voltage cell. This is how we set up a voltage cell. So let's say we have a piece of metal called zinc immersed in a solution. Normally, the solution will be same as the metal we immerse. If this is zinc, the solution normally got zinc, okay? If this is copper, the solution normally got copper, yeah? That would be something that we use, okay? All right, 
So some student will ask, sir, if this is zinc, can we put other solution? Let's say magnesium. Actually, you can do that. But the what we call that, um, this, but it's not as better as you use back the same metal and the same solution. Okay, which means that if today this is a zinc, you immerse in, let's say, magnesium sulfate solution. So this is zinc, this is magnesium. So they are different. The voltage still still works. It still works, but it's not as good as when you put the zinc in zinc solution. That will be the best. Okay, the best voltage cell is when you immerse the metal in the same solution. Okay, that's why zinc put in solution that got zinc. Copper put in a solution that got copper. Does it mean that all the voltage cell must use zinc and copper? No. You want to change the zinc here to aluminium. Then here you put aluminium solution also can. You want to change the copper here with silver or any other metal also can. Yeah, You always can change this metal and this solution. It doesn't mean that your voltage cell must be using zinc and copper. Not necessary. Yeah? So this is what we learned previously. Okay. So as you all can see, so when you come to voltage cell, they must connect the top here with the voltmeter. This voltmeter will measure the voltage. It will tell you how many electricity they can produce. For example, when you connect zinc and copper, they produce 1.10 volt. No need to memorize huh? this number. Not, no need to memorize. Okay? I just want to tell you, let's say when we connect zinc and copper together, they produce electric and it is 1.10 volt. That's all. Yeah. So this is a salt bridge. Salt bridge is used to complete this electric circuit because if you don't have a salt bridge over here, so the electric cannot complete the circuit. Why? Electric will flow from here to here. So you cannot go back to here. So it's not a complete circuit. Whenever you want the electric to flow, you always need a complete circuit. Yeah. So that is a very important idea, just like this. When we do some simple signs, you have a switch. This is a battery. And then this is the bulb. Your bulb will never light up if the switch is left open like this. Why? Because the electric cannot go through the whole complete circuit. Imagine the electric go like this, go like this, and start here. You cannot go back to this point. So complete circuit means it must go up, go back to the original point. Then only called complete circuit. So we need to put the switch off like this. Then only the electric can come here, completing the circuit. When you're completing the circuit, then only you have electricity, which is exactly what happened here. When you put this salt bridge, so imagine the electric can go like this, go like this, go like this, go like this, come back here, come back to this point. Okay then only you have one complete circuit. Okay, that is the idea. <clears throat> okay, so this is for high school. Now, how are we going to transform something that we learned in high school all the way to your A2, all the way to your A-level syllabus? How to do it? So, I want you to know that each of the chemical cell that we have can be split into two half cells. So what we're going to do today is this. We will split this whole thing and then we will get two half cells. So this is the first half cell. This is another half cell. Huh? So we split one complete chemical cell into half. So this is the first half cell. This is the second half cell. So that is what we're going to learn. That is what we're going to study for our A2 syllabus. Okay, so let me show you. So after I split this whole thing, so you can see I will have two half cells already. The first half cell, I call it as a zinc half cell, which you can see I have the zinc immersed in a zinc solution. So you can see I have a zinc immersed in a zinc solution. So this is my first half cell. My second half cell is something here. So after I split, so I will get a copper immersed in a copper solution. That is another half cell. All right. <clears throat> so can you please let me know in the chat box up to this moment, up to this point, are you okay? And do you understand what we have learned so far?
Okay, very good. Thank you so much for your response. It's really easy only. Eh? We just need to understand what is Voltex cell? Something or device. It's a device that we use to produce electricity. How to draw the Voltex cell? Something like this. So for Voltex cell, we cut into half. So we get two parts. These two parts is called half cell. Okay. So now I want you all to know in chemistry, in A level, there are total three types of half cells. Huh? There, are, there are three types of half cells that we need to learn for your A level syllabus huh? to be particular A2. The first one is called metal half cell. The second one is called non metal half cell. The third one is called multiple ions half cell. So there are total three of them. There are total three of them. Huh? So all of you must know how to draw the half cell. Huh? You must know how to draw and how to label. <clears throat> okay, when you come to A level, when you draw a diagram, you must always draw and label it. Okay, don't only draw a diagram without any labeling. So very important that you need to draw the diagram, you need to label the diagram. So now I'll teach all of you how to draw the half cell first. Okay, so let's start with the first one, metal half cell. Okay. So as you can see, for metal half cell, what you should do. Okay, let's say we have the first one called aluminium half cell. This is called aluminium half cell. Sometimes they don't write in words. Sometimes they use some complicated symbol like this, AL3 plus slash AL. So what is this thing? Okay, what is this thing? And how are we going to write all this thing? Okay, so let me teach you how to find out this kind of notation first. This is called a note. This is called a notation. Huh? How to write a notation like this? Okay, later, okay, from this lesson and the subsequent one, we will keep using a value from data booklet. So if you look at your data booklet, this is your data booklet. Okay, you can see this is the data booklet. This data booklet is meant for your 2022, 2023, and 2024 syllabus. Okay, you can get it from internet easily. Okay, all right. So you can see for this data booklet in this entire chapter, electrochemistry, we will keep using this thing. Okay, we will use this value, this value called standard electrode potential, which is something we will learn in a short while. So for now, I want you to look at this thing first, this table. You can see this table, you have a lot of equations and they give you some number here. Okay. So the numbers, I will tell you what it is later on. But for now, I want you to focus on the equation. So from here, how are you going to find out the half cell? Let's say this one. Right? Here you have Ag plus and Ag. So this is a silver half cell. So when you, when you write the half cell, how you write? Ag plus is on the left. So you write Ag plus. Then you go to put a slash. Then here is Ag. I see. Ag plus Ag. Okay, so this is how you write the half cell. So let's say just now, what is the example I use just now? The example I mentioned just now is that I'm using aluminium half cell. So how to write the symbol for aluminium half cell? So if you look at the data booklet we have, let's go for aluminium, everyone. So aluminium, huh? so let's go for the aluminium. Let's see whether we can find it or not. Okay, it's here, all right. So you can see on the second one, aluminium. So this is Al aluminium. So aluminium, we have Al3 plus and Al. So how to write it? Al3 plus is on the left. So Al3 plus, then Al is on the right. So in between here, you go to put a, a slash. Okay, so that is how you write the half cell. Because some students, they're very blur one. Some students say, sir, when I look at the mark scheme or when I look at notes, I don't know whether I should write Al first, then Al3 plus or the other way around, Al3 plus or Al. You don't even need to confuse. Just look at the data booklet. Just look at the equation, like for example, Mg2 plus plus 2E reversible Mg. Just look at the equation from the data booklet. The left is Mg2 plus. Then you put a slash. Mg, you put it on the right. That's it. So that is how you write the notation for the half cell. Huh? So this is how we write the notation for aluminum half cell. And this is how I write the notation for the magnesium half cell. Huh? No need to memorize. All these things could be found in your data booklet. Okay, so now our focus is not on the writing. Our focus is more on the drawing, how to draw it. So how to draw the aluminum half cell. 
So remember, when you come to metal half cell, when you come to metal half cell, what is the logic? You want to pee, you want to put a piece of metal immerse in the metal solution. Okay, you want to put a metal immerse inside a metal solution. That's what we want to do. That's why for aluminium half cell, we take a piece of aluminium metal immerse in a solution. So like what I said earlier on, normally the solution must match with the metal you immerse. So when you immerse aluminium metal, the solution should have Al3 plus ion. The solution must have zinc sulfate. Zinc sulfate, we have Zn2 plus the zinc ion. You see that? Okay. The sulfate is not really important. The important one is the Zn2 plus only. We want to make sure that the metal must immerse it into the same metal ion. Same thing here. Copper want to immerse in the ion. Here we have Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus. The important one is only Cu2 plus. SO4 not important at all. Okay. So that's why when you come to A level, you no longer need to write the one at the back. The sulfate, uh, nitrate, uh, chloride at the back, no need to write. You just need to write this. You see, uh? aluminium immerse in the metal solution. This metal solution must contain the metal ion. So what is the metal ion? When you have aluminium, you immerse in aluminium ion, Al3+. When you have magnesium, you immerse in magnesium ion, Mg2+. So always immerse the metal into the same metal ion. So if you have, if you have uh, magnesium, you put magnesium ion. If you, have, if you have aluminium, you put aluminium ion. That's it. Now you have to know a very important thing. When we have we have a solution, we must use the sun. This is something new. Okay, look at here. Look at the tips. Huh? In A level, we always heard about standard condition. In chemistry, there are some standard condition that we use. Not only chemistry, even physics also, also the same thing. Physics, we call it as SI, isn't it? Physics, we call it as SI. Okay, you learn this in form four if you're from SPM, or you learn it in year 10 if you're from IG, CSE. Okay, so what is the SI unit? So SI unit for the mass is kilo. SI unit for the current is ampere. All right, something like that. All right, so they fix a standard there. All right, so same thing in chemistry, we also need to fix the standard, but we only fix three things. The first one is temperature. So in chemistry, the temperature, standard temperature, always referring to 25 degrees Celsius or equivalent to 298 Kelvin. Yeah, you know that because I think I have mentioned a few times already since AS, standard pressure in A level is called 1 atm, 1 atmospheric pressure, which is equivalent to 101.3 kilopascal. Yeah, all right. But so far, back in AS, okay, we seldom or we never talk about standard concentration huh? because previously in AS, normally we only standardize the temperature and we standardize the pressure, but not the concentration. So today, since we are playing around with the liquid, we are playing around with solution, we need to know the standard concentration. Standard concentration in A level is called one mole per dmq. Okay, one mole per dmq. So everyone should know, uh, mole per dmq is the unit for concentration. This concentration can also call molarity. Molarity, uh, you learned this back in high school. So you can write one mole per dmq, or you can simplify as 1m, okay, 1m. Because in chemistry, the big capital M represent molarity, which is mole per dmq, okay, which is mole per dmq. So when you see something like that, okay, 3m, okay, hydrochloric acid, which means what? This hydrochloric acid is 3 mole per dmq, okay? So the capital M stand for mole per dmq, which tell you, the concentration of a solution. So when you do chemistry, you must use standard concentration. So this ion, the standard concentration must be one mole per dmq. So you all can write the full statement, one mole per dmq, or if you are lazy, 
you can just write the capital 1M, okay, 1M. But make sure that M must be in a big capital. Huh? You cannot write 1M in a small capital. It's wrong, okay? The M has to be written in a big capital. So same thing. When magnesium immerses into a solution, the solution must have magnesium ion. What is the concentration for the ion? The ion, the concentration must be one mole per dm cube, which can be written as one m. Okay, so guys, up to this point, are you okay with how to draw a metal half cell? Are you okay with how to draw a metal half cell so far? Okay, good. So can we use one minute to try a simple question together? Let's do a simple self-test. Huh? So let's do a quick self-test together. All right. So I want to go for a silver half cell. Okay, silver half cell. So silver half cell, how are we going to write the notation? So let's look at the silver here first. So silver, huh? So let's see whether we can find the silver here or not. Or silver. Okay. Yeah, I think this table, the silver is not here. Never mind. Let me find uh, silver. Oh, silver is on the first one. Uh. All right. Always miss out this one. This one. Okay. This table is arranged in your in the alphabetical order. This one they go in alphabet. So quite simple. Uh. Silver is A G ma, letter A. So you will be on top. That's what you can see. Letter A, letter B, letter C. Uh, follow the alpha, follow the alphabetical order. So silver is here, uh, AG. So AG plus and AG. So oh, the left hand side is AG plus, right hand side is AG. So when you write the notation, it will be something like this. Okay? It will be something like this. Uh. So we write AG plus a slash and AG. Okay? So this is the half cell uh, for the silver. Okay. So now how to draw it? So when you want to draw a metal half cell, always draw a piece of metal. Don't forget you labeled it. This is AG. And this metal must be immersed in a solution. We use a beaker to put in the solution. So when you use silver metal, the solution must have silver ion. So when you have a solution, the solution must be in standard concentration, which you can write one mole per dm cube, or you can write a short form one big capital M. That's it. So this is how we draw the metal half cell for the silver. Okay, we are done. Huh? Okay, let's go on with the next one. Later, we will do some past year questions so you know exactly how to how the question can be tested in the real examination. Huh? We will I'll show you that later on. Huh? So the next thing I will show you is this. Okay, the next one is called a non-metal half cell. So now we will go on with a non-metal half cell. Okay. So non-metal half cell, normally it will involve some gases. Okay, for non-metal half cell, normally the gas will come in. So I will use two examples for demonstration here. I will use two examples to demonstrate what is the non-metal half cell here. The first non-metal half cell is called chlorine half cell. The second non-metal half cell is called hydrogen half cell. Please, please, please. Don't memorize. No need to memorize. Just understand the concept. Then you are good to go. Yeah? Then you are good to go. Huh? Okay, how to write the cell notation again? If you look at the data booklet for chlorine, follow alphabet, follow your alphabet. C, C for chlorine is here. So chlorine, Cl2 come first, Cl minus at the back. So Cl2 slash Cl minus. So some students will ask, sir, what about here? You see in front of CL here, there is a two. There is a number two here. Shouldn't we write a two here? No. This two is only used for balancing purpose. Huh? The two over there is only used for balancing purpose. So you don't need to balance it. You only need to write the species on the left and the species on the right without balancing. Okay, without the balancing. Okay, so no need to put the two. Huh? All right, so that's it. Okay. So now this is how we get the chlorine half cell. Same thing, hydrogen half cell also the same. Huh? Hydrogen half cell, if you look at the data booklet, how we write it, hydrogen is H. Let's find the alphabet, okay? Where is the H? Huh? So this is H, okay? This is the H here. Huh? Okay, hydrogen half cell. Let's see uh, whether they put in here or not. Okay, here. Okay, this is the hydrogen half cell. 
Okay, so on the left is H plus. Number two in front only meant for balancing, no need to bother. Just write H plus slash on the right hand side is H2. Okay, so this is how we label the hydrogen half cell. Lah. Okay, so we're done with this. So, how to draw? Now, be careful and watch out, everyone, because as what I said a moment ago, non metal half cell contain gas. So, when you have a gas, you need a special container like this. You need a special container like this. What is this? This is actually a test tube that you invert it. You invert the test tube, okay? You invert the test tube, all right? So, and then this test tube, you need to open a hole. Why you want to open a hole? Because you want the gas to go in, okay? Because we know the chlorine is a gas. We know hydrogen is a gas. So you want the gas to go in to the test tube. So you need to open the hole. Okay, the hole you can open on the left or you can open on the right, no problem. Like you can draw like this and then you open the hole on the left-hand side like this, also can. You also can open the hole on the right-hand side like this, also can, no problem, yeah? Right, you open the hole to let the gas go in. So what you can see is that the chlorine gas will go into the test tube, okay? All right. So again, remember standard condition. When you have a gas, you must mention about the pressure. I repeat, okay, gas must use standard pressure. So when you have a gas, you must use a standard pressure solution you must go to use the standard concentration, okay? So solution, the concentration need to fix it, need to standardize. Gas, you need to standardize the pressure. So what is the pressure, which is standard pressure? 1 atm. So this is the 1 atm chlorine gas, okay? Go in here, all right? So then the next thing, okay, what is the ion here? So normally the ion must same as the species will go in. That's why when we have aluminium metal, we use aluminium ion. When we have magnesium metal, we use magnesium ion. So now when we have chlorine gas, any ion related with chlorine, Cl minus chloride. Eh? So when we use chlorine gas, so the ion that is correspond or the ion that is matching with the chlorine is called chloride ion. Okay, so that's it. Eh? All right, so today if, I use hydrogen gas goes in. So I use hydrogen ion. So you see, it always match one, okay? Aluminium metal, aluminium ion. Magnesium metal, magnesium ion. Hydrogen gas, hydrogen ion. Chlorine gas, chloride ion. So all the ion, they are in solution form. So they must use a standard concentration, which is one mole per dm cube. So I'm lazy. I didn't write the full name, one more per dm cube. I just use a short form, 1M. Eh? All right? I hope everyone know. So now the next thing which is very important is this. When we have a non-metal half cell, we are no longer using the metal as electrode. We use platinum. You see just now? All right? When we have aluminum half cell, we use aluminum electrode. When we have magnesium half cell, we use magnesium electrode. But when we come to non-metal half cell, when we come to non-metal half cell, we always use platinum as the electrode. Okay, we use platinum. All right. So please be, be careful with this. Huh? All right. And platinum is very, very costly. Platinum is very expensive. If you compare platinum with other metal, platinum is very, very expensive. That's why we use in a very small quantity. That's why you see here, when we draw the electrode platinum, we only draw in a small piece. Okay, just draw a small rectangle and draw PT. That's it. You don't use something like this. Huh? You don't use like this is the this is the chloride ion, and then one M concentration, and then you draw one whole big piece of platinum. No, we don't do something like that. Why? It is super expensive, very, very expensive. So we don't use a big pieces like this. We just use a very tiny very small quantity. All right. Can you please let me know in the chat box? Do you get the idea so far?
Okay, good. All right, thank you for responding. So that's it, huh? All right. So then you must you, you need to see why there is a black thing here. What is it? What is this long, long thing? This is the wire. This is the wire. Because you see here, all the half cell, actually you can see they have the wire here. Why? Eh? If I bring you back to the voltage cell, you can see one. This is the voltage cell. When you cut it, you can see when you cut it, you can see this half cell at the end of the day here got connect to wire one. Okay, this is the wire. This is another half cell. So here also connect to a wire. Okay. So that's why you need to draw a wire like this. Okay. So this wire need to go all the way until inside. Lah, because if the wire only draw until here, you see, imagine if the wire only draw until here, you are not connected to the platinum. Cannot. So you must go all the way until here. All right. So make sure you know huh, how to draw this. Okay. This is for non-metal half cell. Again, no need to worry. Because I will show you exactly how to you, how to apply this concept by using some past year question in a short while. Okay, let me go through another one more first. Okay, so the third and the last half cells that you need to know is called multiple ion half cell. Multiple ion half cell because so far as you can see, no matter metal half cell or non-metal half cell, there's only one ion inside. You can see aluminum ion only. Magnesium ion only, chloride ion only, hydrogen ion only. There's only one ion out there. But now we are looking for multiple ion half cell. For example, the first one is Fe3 plus slash Fe2 plus. It means that this half cell inside got two ions. This, this half cell got two ions, Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. So how to go about it? Okay, so these two are ion. So ion always present in the solution. So solution, remember, when you draw the solution, you, you don't draw like this. Huh? You must draw some dotted line. If you don't draw any dotted line like this, if the whole thing is empty, like white color like this, huh? examiner, the examiner will assume it is a solid. Okay? If you only draw something like this, without the dotted line, examiner would assume it is a solid. So please, for a solution, please draw a please draw your dotted line. Okay, just draw a few. Don't draw too much, huh? Because if you draw too much, it looks messy. Yeah. So you have two ion inside Fe two plus and Fe three plus. So all the ion, the concentration must be standard concentration one mole per dm cube. One mole per dm cube. Okay. So you need to list out like this. You cannot write. Some people are lazy. They write one m Fe two plus and Fe three plus. Cannot. You need to write and list out everything. You need to list out 1M Fe2 plus, 1M Fe3 plus. You need to list out everything. Huh? Then some student, they might ask, Sir, is it, does it matter? Does it matter if we change the sequence? Can I write 1M Fe3 plus, then only Fe2 plus? Can I do that? Yes. The sequence doesn't matter. So whether you want to write Fe3 plus first or you want to write Fe2 plus first, it doesn't matter. It's okay, Wana. No problem on that. Okay. So same thing here. Let's say we have another half cell called MnO4 and Mn2 plus half cell. Now this is where a lot of students start to make a mistake. You see, yeah? this is where a lot of students start to make a mistake. They say, okay, I can see two ion here. So I presume, I presume this is a multiple ion half cell. So by right, MnO4 is an ion. So MnO4 minus is an ion. I put the concentration 1M. That is the standard concentration. Mn2 plus is another ion, which I use a standard concentration. But sir, why there is one H plus ion popping out here? Why there is H plus ion popping out here? That's why in this case, I want to remind you all, don't rely on the information given. Don't rely on your information given. I want you all to always, always check your data booklet. So check the data booklet. Check for what? Check for the equation. Check the data booklet for equation. Huh? Okay, what do I mean? What do I mean? Check the data booklet for the equation. Huh? So look at the equation that got MnO4 and Mn2+. Huh? Everyone, let's do it together. Let's go for the let's go to the data booklet. Okay, let's go to this data booklet. Huh? All right. So we are looking for the equation that got MnO4 and also Mn2 plus. So let's do it. Huh? Okay, everyone, let's put your eyes on here. So follow alphabet M. Huh? 
follow alphabetical order M. Eh? So let's go for M. So we have M. There's so many M here. You have to be very careful. You have to be careful. Huh? Okay, so you can see this one you have MNO4. Looks good. But over here is MNO4 2 minus. This is not what we want. Here we have MNO4. But here is MNO2, not what we want. So we are looking for MNO4 pairing with MN2 plus. So remember the pairing. This is where a lot of students always choose the wrong equation because there's so many equations that looks quite similar to each and other. So what should we do? So if you look at the equation here, this one should be the one that we're looking for because it has the MNO4 that we wanted and it has MN2 plus. So from this equation, what else that we can see? Do you notice that in this equation, apart from MnO4 and Mn2+, plus, we also got hydrogen ion? You see that? So that's why if you only look at the symbol MnO4 and Mn2+, plus, so you never see the H plus ion is present. Okay? You never see the H plus ion is present. So if you only draw with MnO4 and Mn2+, plus, you might have forgotten to put the H plus ion inside. So that's why you have to refer to the equation. You have to refer to the equation, yeah? So that's why for this equation, I can see I have MnO4, I have Mn2+, plus. I also have H+. Plus. Remember, H plus ion, the number in front not important. It's only for balancing. I only want to know there is H plus ion out there. So as long as I have ion, I know they are in standard concentration, 1M. Okay, up to now, do you understand what am I talking about? Okay, so please always refer to the half equation. This is very essential, very important. Okay, so now look at here. Same thing, when we have multiple ion half cell, we also use platinum as electrode only, all right? Uh, so platinum, very expensive, used in a small quantity. So from here, you should know already, you see, huh? so let's make a quick summary here. So we have three half cells here. If you have a metal half cell, the electrode go to use metal. So if you have non-metal half cell and multiple ion half cell, then you go to use platinum. So I want to make sure all of you aware that when you should use platinum as the electrode and when you should use the metal as the electrode. Because many students, they always use the wrong electrode at the wrong time. They always use the wrong electrode at the wrong time. Later, I teach you a tips how to memorize. Huh? Okay, but for now, let me show you first. Multiple ion half cell, which is this one, and also this one, you have so many ions. You have so many ions. So we use platinum as the electrode. So in this case, you don't need to draw this measuring, sorry, this uh, test tube already. You don't need to draw the test tube. Why? Because you have no gas to be insert. You don't need to pump in any gas, right? Because Fe3 plus is not a gas. Fe2 plus is not a gas. MnO4 and Mn2 plus is not a gas. When you don't have any gas, you don't need to use this uh, test tube. You, you don't need to use the test tube with the hole. No need. Huh? You don't need to use the test tube with, the, with this opening. Huh? Okay, we call it opening or we call it a hole. Yeah? So please be careful. Huh? Some people say, hey, how come here got platinum, but we don't draw the test tube one? Why? Huh? Why we don't need to draw the test tube? Okay? So make sure you're aware why. Okay, we don't need to use the test tube if there is no gas for us to pump in. Huh? When you don't need to pump in the gas, no need to use the test tube. Lah. Okay? Same thing, all these electrodes, because they are platinum, they are expensive, used in a small quantity. Used in a small quantity, all the electrodes must be connected using a wire. Huh? You must draw the wire. If you forget to draw the wire, they can penalize you. Huh? They can deduct your marks. So please, please, please don't forget to draw your wire. Okay? Many students, they draw everything but they forgot to draw the wire, okay? All right, so let me give you a summary and a tips how to memorize the electrode. So let's look at here. This is a summary, a simple tips for you. If there is only one metal ion in the solution, so in the solution, if you have only one metal ion, then you use the same metal as the electrode. Example, if your solution inside got aluminum ion, then you use aluminum metal as the electrode. If the solution inside have one metal ion, Mg2+, 
then you use magnesium metal as the electrode. No problem. Okay. When there is any non-metal ion or when you have multiple ion inside the solution, then you go for platinum. Example, when you see the solution inside got MnO4, inside got H+, inside got Mn2+, when the solution got many, many ion, you go to use platinum. Okay. When your solution got, this is where a lot of students mess up, Fe3+, and Fe2+. Hey, sir, you got Fe, oh. So why we don't use Fe as the electrode? Cannot. You only use iron as the electrode when inside here only got one metal ion. When you have only have when you only have Fe three plus or when you have Fe two plus only. When you have one metal ion, then only you use the metal as the electrode. Other than that, just go for platinum. This is a simple way to memorize. So let me repeat one more time, huh? If I look at the solution, it only have one metal ion, then I go for metal electrode. Other than that, I always use platinum. Okay, can you please let me know in the chat box, do you understand uh, this concept? Okay, good. All right, thank you for responding. Again, no worries because we will do some past year question in a short while. Okay, so that you, you can see exactly how it works. Lah. Okay. All right. So now we have completed the first part for today's lesson. So the first part for today's lesson is to introduce you the concept for voltage cell. Okay. Introduce you the concept of the so-called half cell and introduce you three types of half cell, metal half cell, non-metal half cell, and multiple ion half cell, and how to draw and how to label all these half cells, okay? All right, so I get the question, why we cannot use carbon as electrode instead of platinum since both are in a, a very, very good question, huh? all right? So we learned in high school, huh? carbon or another name is called graphite and also platinum, they are all inner electrode. Absolutely correct. Huh? We learned this back in high school, okay? So why don't the platinum here, we change with carbon? And we know carbon is definitely much cheaper. It's definitely much cheaper in compared to the platinum. Okay, the reason is this. When the scientists, they go to try to use carbon and platinum, okay, as the half cell, they notice that platinum actually can give a better effect. Okay, the platinum actually works better, works better. Okay, what do we mean by works better? For example, when they produce electric, let's say the electric you should produce is 1.23 watt. Lah, let's say, eh? if they use carbon, yes, you can get 1.23 watt. But this 1.23 watt, the voltage cannot last long. Maybe you only get 1.23 watt for 10 minutes. Then after 10 minutes, the voltage drop until 1.21. Then it drop until 1.19, something like that. But when they use platinum, they can the 1.23 watt can last, for example, for two hours then only it dropped to 1.21, okay? So it will still drop, but it, this voltage can actually last longer. So because of that, they find out that platinum is actually more suitable to be used compared to carbon. That's why we are using platinum over here, even though we know carbon is also inert, okay? This is a very, very good question, okay? Thank you for asking. I hope I, 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 hope I answered your question. Okay, all right, good. Okay, anything not sure you can ask. Huh? All right, so done. Okay, so we are done with the first part already. So let's move on to the second part of this lesson. The second part of this lesson, we need to learn and we need to, we need to, we need to cover this, okay? You need to understand that every half cell, they actually can produce certain voltage, okay? Which means this, okay? Uh, this is a, something new for you. Huh? This is something new for you. Huh? All right. Let's say in SPM, we know that when zinc and copper combine together, let's say they produce 1.10 watt, okay? So zinc and copper together, collectively, they produce 1.10 watt. But in A level, I want you to learn this, okay? Which is something that we will learn, okay? Zinc and copper half cell, they actually produce voltage, okay? For example, out of 1.10 watt here, zinc, probably will produce 0 0.76 volt. 
and the copper will produce 0.34 watt. So every half cell, they will produce certain amount of voltage. They will produce certain amount of electricity. So that is the logic that I want you to know here. This is something new because previously back in high school, we only learned the combination. We only learned when zinc and copper combine together, the total voltage is 1.10 volt, for example. Yeah, again, the number is not important. You don't need to memorize the 1.10. It's not important at all for the number, huh? just the concept. So previously, we only learned the total voltage for both of them is 1.10. But in A-level, we learned that Zinc actually produce certain voltage. Copper also produce certain voltage. And we want to find out what are the voltage produced by that half cell. So let's look at here. Each half cell, every single half cell, they can produce certain voltage. So this voltage, we call it as, we call this value as standard electrode potential. Okay, we call it as standard electrode potential or some of the book, they call it a standard reduction potential, okay? okay? Why they call it a standard reduction potential? Huh? For a simple reason. So let's look at here. If you look at this table, okay, if you look at this table, all right? This table, they call it standard electrode or we call standard reduction potential. Why they call reduction potential? Because if you notice, huh, everything in this table, the electron is written on the left hand side. Can you see? Electron is written on the left. So we learn in high school. Okay, we learn in high school. We learn about half equation in high school. Huh? Let's say we have A become A plus plus E and A and let's say W2 plus plus 2E become W. Okay, we learn in high school. When the electron is found on the right hand side, it means that this electron is being donated because the A throw away this electron to become A plus. So when electron on the right hand side, it means that this electron is being donated. When the electron on the left hand side, which means that this electron will be taken or received by F uh, W2 plus. So this is received. Okay. And we learned before also donate electron is actually oxidation, right? Receive electron is reduction. That's why you can see all the equation here, electron is written on the left. So they are receiving the electron. When they receive the electron, that is reduction. That's why they also call standard reduction potential. Please let me know in the chat box, do you get this idea? Okay, so I try my best to explain so that you understand why. Okay, what is the reason behind? I don't want you to memorize the whole thing blindly without understanding. Okay, I need you to really understand the whole concept. Okay, all good. Huh? Okay, sometimes they don't write the name though. Sometimes they don't write the name. They already use some symbol. Okay, so like what we learned before, like lattice energy is called delta H L A T T. Okay, let's say Gibbs energy delta G naught. So they always have some symbol. Huh? So the symbol for the electrode potential is called E naught. It's an E and a circle on top. Again, why they put a circle on top? Because we learned before, the circle here stand for standard condition. Okay, that's why when you come to the electrode potential, we use the standard temperature, standard pressure, and standard concentration. Okay, ah, uh, so that's why we put a circle on top. We call it a knot, lah. Okay, E naught. Yeah. All right, that's it. So now you already know all the half cell they can produce the voltage. That voltage is called standard electrode potential. Okay, now the next thing you have to learn how how to measure the E naught value because you can see they give us this E naught value in the data booklet. Like oh, from here I know aluminium half cell positive zero point eight zero volt. Okay, let's say uh barium half cell negative 2.0 at uh, 2.90 so they give you all this value where this value coming from where does this value coming from okay so this is the idea whenever you want to measure you want to do any measurement for the e naught value we need to connect the half cell to a standard hydrogen electrode 
Okay, take any half cell, connect to standard hydrogen electrode. Standard hydrogen electrode, aka also known as hydrogen half cell. So take your half cell and connect to hydrogen half cell, then you will be able to measure the voltage for that particular half cell. Okay, what do I mean? Huh? Okay, so I use three examples for demonstration. So at least you can have some rough idea what it is. You can have some rough idea what it is. Huh? Okay, example. Today, I want to know how much electric can be produced by a zinc half cell. So let's say I have a zinc half cell. I want to know zinc half cell can produce how many or how much voltage, okay? So what should I do? Take the zinc half cell. So this is how we draw the zinc half cell. A zinc metal immersed in zinc ion. The ion must be in standard concentration, one amma. So draw a zinc half cell and draw a hydrogen half cell. Okay, so we learned about hydrogen half, half cell early today. Hydrogen is non-metal. So this is a non-metal half cell. Hydrogen is a gas. So any half cell that got gas, you need to draw this uh, test tube. Okay, and then you need to draw the hole. Okay, you need to open the hole. The hole can open on the left or open on the right. So how to know you, you want to draw on the left or on the right? So for me, very really simple. If I want the gas, if I draw the cell on the right-hand side, I'll let the gas to go in from the right-hand side. Then the hole I will open on the right-hand side. If I want to draw the gas, if I want the gas to come from the left-hand side, I will open the hole on the left-hand side. So it really depends on you. It really depends on you. You want the gas come in from the left or you want the gas come in from the right. As simple as that, okay? So you see, yeah? let's come back to here. So if I want to know how much electricity can be produced by zinc half cell, I draw a zinc half cell and I draw a hydrogen half cell. So hydrogen half cell, you have hydrogen gas go into the solution. The solution must be hydrogen ion. Concentration must be one amma. And then remember where you should use platinum. Why? When the ion is non-metal, okay? you only use the metal as electrode if there's only one metal ion inside. But when the ion is non-metal or when the ion is multiple ions, then you have to use platinum, okay? So now you have these two half cells. Now, if you want to measure how many electric can be produced, then you need to connect them, okay? So two half cell must be connected by wire on top and salt bridge at the bottom, okay? On top, you need to use wire to connect and you need to use salt bridge to connect at the bottom. So you see, on top here, you need to use wire and the wire must connect to a watt meter so that you can read and you know all how much electric can be produced. You need a watt meter to tell you the reading. Yeah, you need a watt meter to tell the reading. So on the top here, so you use the wire and the watt meter. At the bottom here, you need to link them. Why? Because if you never link them, the electric cannot have a complete circuit. You start at here. Complete circuit means the electric must come back to here. What? So how do you do it? You must build a bridge. Okay. This bridge is called a salt bridge. So just use a free hand. Don't need to use ruler. Some people use the ruler to draw. No need. Just use a free hand to draw something like this. Make sure this and this is immersed in a solution. I don't want like something like this. Okay. I don't want you to draw. This is a solution. So when you draw, you see this part and this part is hanging in the air. No one. You want this part to go into the solution. This part go into the solution. That is very, very important. And please don't forget, every time when you draw, you need to label. So this is a salt bridge. So some students will ask, sir, should we label the V as watt meter? No need, huh? because V, obviously, we know is a watt meter. But if you only draw a line like this, examiner, they don't know. It is a salt bridge, okay? So you always label it, okay? Always label it, okay? So once you connect the whole thing like this, then this watt meter will show you the reading. The reading on the watt meter here will tell you that is the amount of electricity produced by zinc. As simple as that, okay? As simple as that, okay? So let's say if you look at the data booklet, then you know already, okay? If you look at the data booklet, you will know 
when I have a zinc half cell, it will produce negative 0 0.76 volt. Okay, so how I know the zinc half cell will produce 0 0.76 volt? So I will take the zinc half cell. Okay, I'll take the zinc half cell. Okay, connect to a standard hydrogen half cell. Always use hydrogen half cell. Connect to the half cell that you wanted to study or you wanted to know about the voltage. Okay, all right, that's it. So now the question is that why? Why we must use hydrogen half cell? Why don't we connect to others? Some people say, sir, why don't we take the zinc half cell here? Then we go to connect with, let's say, aluminium half cell. Okay, then we go to measure the voltage. Why don't we do that? Why we have to use hydrogen half cell? Is there any reason there? I will say yes. Okay, yes, there is a reason. Okay, why we need to standardize the 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 the, the what we call that uh, one of the half cell. Okay, because you all have to know a simple thing. Okay, when you want to do any comparison, you always want to set the same reference. You always want to use the same reference. Then only is fair. Okay, what do we mean by same reference? Okay, that's why we learned about SI unit. Okay, that's why we learned about SI unit in physics. Okay, why we need to use kilogram for the mass? So it's easy to communicate. Why? Imagine, uh, previously, some of the country, uh, how they measure the mass, they go to use the unit called stone. Let's say in UK, they use the unit called pounds. All right? So it's very hard. Okay? Let's say, imagine that uh, today you go to a shop. You say, I want to buy 40 kilogram of what, what, what? Okay, 40 kilogram of material A. So if they, if let's say the, 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 if let's say the store, they are using kilogram as the unit, then they understand what you want. But if let's say they are not, so you go in, let's say I go to, I go to UK. I say, I want to find four kilo. I want to buy four kilogram of salt but they don't know what is kilogram because they are using pound. So it's very hard to communicate. So we need to standardize the whole thing. That's why we use the standard unit. So same thing, when you want to measure the voltage, you want to compare the half cell to the same reference. You must use the same reference, okay, to connect to the half cell. So what is the reference here? So the reference you use the, hydrogen half cell. That's why if you look at the hydrogen half cell, they put a value, everyone put your eyes here. Hydrogen half cell, look, put your eyes on here. What is the value here? Zero, which means they assume hydrogen half cell do not produce electric at all. So which means that whenever you have any reading here, so this reading, let's say uh, the reading pop out here is negative 0 0.76. You know for sure this value is the zinc already. Why? Because hydrogen, the value confirmed is zero. If this is zero, then this fuller has to be negative 0 0.76. Then only you can get this value in the end. As simple as that, okay? Because if today you use other thing, let's say you go to use other half cell, you use aluminum half cell. So aluminum half cell, then there will be a problem. If let's say here you get, 2.7 volt. So the problem is what? The 2.7 volt, you don't know how much belongs to the zinc. And you don't know how much belongs to aluminium because zinc and aluminium, both of them got voltage. So you don't know the voltage for each of them. But if today you use the hydrogen, you know hydrogen here is zero. So whatever value appear here, it tell you the voltage of this half cell. All right, I know it sounds a little bit complicated. Can you please let me know in the chat box? Can you follow? Can you follow? Can you understand this idea? Okay, so I hope you guys understand now why we need to use hydrogen half cell to connect with other people. Okay, uh, so that's the reason. So hydrogen is our reference. Huh? The hydrogen here is our reference, OK? 
Okay, we, so today if I want to know what is the voltage for aluminum half cell, what should I do? Take aluminum half cell, connect to hydrogen half cell. If I want to know how much electric can produce by a magnesium half cell, so take a magnesium half cell, connect to a hydrogen half cell. So whenever you want to know how much is the voltage, connect that particular half cell to your standard hydrogen electrode. As simple as that. Okay, that's it. All right, so like what I say, you need to use the work meter lah, because the work meter can measure the E0 value for you. Okay, it can measure the E0 value for you. Ah. So that's it. So now you guys should have some rough idea already. So let me show you another two more examples before we run through some paths here. Okay, let's say now, what if I want to measure the standard electrode potential for a half cell? This half cell is called chlorine half cell. So same thing, we combine all the knowledge that we learned today. So can we draw the chlorine half cell first? Yes, of course, we can draw the chlorine half cell. So chlorine half cell, chlorine is a gas. So how to draw a gas half cell? You need to draw a measuring, so you need to draw a test tube. Okay, all right. So, so let's say now, what should I do is that, okay? Why I need to draw a test tube? Because we know chlorine half cell, we have the chlorine in a gas form. So you want the gas to come in, you need to draw this test tube. Okay, so chlorine gas come in and then make sure you label it and make sure all the gas you use the standard pressure 180 m. Huh? Okay, so next one, all the substance must immerse in ion. Huh? So remember, no matter you have metal half cell, non-metal half cell, multiple ion half cell, all of them got solution. The solution must have ion. The ion must match with the species here. So when you use Cl, the ion is Cl minus. So concentration, one mole per dm cube or can be written as one m, yeah? Okay, so not to forget, okay, what is the material you should use here? So when you, when you, when you look at the ion, you have one ion, but it's non-metal, so you should, you should go for platinum. So allow me to remind you one more time. Huh? You only use metal as electrode if and only if the ion here is a metal and you only have one metal ion. Okay? If you have non-metal ion or you have many, many ion, then you have to use platinum. So not to forget you have a wire here. Okay, so that's it. So this is how we draw the chlorine half cell. So after draw the chlorine half cell, what should we draw? So when you want to do any measurement for the standard electrode potential, so you always need to connect this half cell that you want to measure all the way to the hydrogen half cell. So again, you need to draw your hydrogen half cell again. Hydrogen half cell, you have hydrogen gas, standard pressure 180 m, platinum electrode, and hydrogen ion, one mole per dm cube. Okay, so I hope you guys know how to draw this and you know how to draw this up. Huh? So again, we are not done yet because two half cell, they must join together. When you want to join, you must join top, you must join bottom. So you join the top by using wire. So the wire, you draw it, and then the wire must connect to a watt meter so you can measure how much voltage out there. At the bottom here, you also need to connect these two solutions by using a salt bridge. And the salt bridge here cannot keep it empty. You need to label it. You need to label and tell the examiner that this is a salt bridge. Okay, here we go. So we are done. Okay, all right. You'll be quite surprised how many marks they can give you for this drawing. Huh? I'll show you in past year question in a short while. It is super rewarding. It's super, super rewarding. If you know how to draw this kind of diagram, huh? I'll show you in a short while. Okay, so by doing this, you already can measure. So after you measure, what is the voltage out there? So if you look at the voltage, let's say uh, for chlorine, so for chlorine is here. So chlorine, half cell. So it will give you positive 1.36 watt. Okay, 1.36 watt, uh, all right? The unit is in watt, all right? So that's it. So this is how we measure the voltage for chlorine half cell. Okay, let me give you another one more example. All right, now what if I want to measure the standard electrode potential for Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus half cell? So what is this? This is the multiple ion half cell. This is a non-metal half cell. This is a metal half cell. 
it doesn't matter what it is. Just draw it first. Just draw. So when you have this half cell, again, don't rely on this. Always check the data booklet uh, because so that you won't miss out any ion. Uh, just like the case like, like I said just now, MnO4 and Mn2+, plus. if you didn't check the data booklet, you don't know actually that is H plus ion, something left out. So to be secure, always check the data booklet, uh, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. So let's look at it. So alphabet F, uh, F. So Fe3 plus, but here don't have Fe2 plus, you don't want. Uh, this is Fe3 plus, this is Fe2 plus. Do you have any other ion here? No, only Fe3 plus, only Fe2 plus. So let's go back. So you can see Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. So can we draw this half cell? Absolutely. Draw it. So let's use a skill that we learned today. So all the ion we need to put in a solution. So we have Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. Sequence doesn't matter. You can write any one first, also can. So please write the word ion. Eh? And all the ion, they must use go for standard concentration 1M. So in this case, okay, what is the material we should use as the electrode? Can you guys type in the chat box and let me know what is the material we should use as the electrode here? Can anyone type in the chat box and let me know? Okay, good. You should use platinum. Huh? You should use platinum. Why we don't use iron as the electrode? Because you only use iron as the electrode if you only have one metal ion. Now, you have metal ion, but too bad you have two of them. So when you have multiple ion or when you have non-metal ion, you must go for platinum. So platinum is expensive. Don't draw a full piece like this. Don't do it. Draw a smaller piece like this. Platinum. Okay? Platinum. All right? And then not to forget your wire. All right? So some people will ask, sir, if let's say we have the metal ion uh, like this, okay, let's say uh, we have Mg2 plus ion, 1M. So in this case, when we have one metal ion, we can go for metal electro Mg, right? So if I don't want to draw a big piece like this, uh, if I don't want, don't want to draw a big pieces of magnesium, can I draw a small pieces of magnesium? Of course you can. So magnesium is quite cheap. You want to use a big, piece or you want to use the smaller pieces, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But one thing for sure, platinum must use in a small piece because platinum is very costly, very expensive. Yeah. So now that's it. So I draw the Fe2 plus here. Okay. So now in this case, I purposely change a little bit because you see so far for the past two examples, I draw the hydrogen half cell on the on the right hand side. Okay. On the past two examples, I draw the hydrogen half cell on the right, but it doesn't means that it must be on the right. It doesn't, it doesn't have a rules to say that, okay, the hydrogen half cell must be on the right. No, it's okay one. So in this case, if I want to measure the electrode potential, I know I need to connect this half cell to the hydrogen half cell. So can I draw the hydrogen half cell on the left? No problem, up to you. You want to draw the hydrogen half cell on the left or you want to draw the hydrogen half cell on the right also can. It doesn't matter. So in this case, when I draw the hydrogen half cell on the left, I want the gas to come in on the left. Okay? So very simple one. If I draw the hydrogen half cell on the right, I want the hydrogen gas to come in from the right. Because it looks weird, right? If let's say you draw the hydrogen half cell on the right, okay, you draw the hydrogen half cell, on the right, like this. Then you let the gas come in from the left. It looks super messy because later you still need to draw salt, bridge here, and then you can see some overlapping like this. Not good. It doesn't look nice. So very simple. Hydrogen half cell on the right, the gas coming from the right, the opening on the right. Hydrogen half cell you draw on the left, the opening, make it on the left, and let the gas to come in on the left. As simple as that. Yeah, as simple as that. Just for some common sense to make your life easier, okay? So you draw this hydrogen half cell. I hope everyone know how to draw this. Then remember two half cell currently have no interaction, no connection yet. So how to connect two half cell? Connect top and bottom. Connect top by word meter. Connect bottom by salt bridge. The salt bridge need to be labeled. Yeah, the salt bridge need to be labeled. Okay, by doing that, 
we have already completed the diagram. Huh? That is what you need to know. Okay, so let's go on a little bit more. Then we jump on to the past here. Okay, so we have still have a little bit more to go here. Okay, then we go to the past here. Okay, but before we continue up to now, as, as per now, all the three examples that we covered so far, do you guys understand? Are you okay with what we have covered so far? Okay, so I purposely go very slow because this is the most important thing and this is the beginning of a chapter. So if you don't really understand this basic thing, when you move on, you're going to find it very confusing because I know some of the college can actually cover all the concepts I teach you now, like the whole, you know, the drawing, the electro potential concept, some of the school can finish in 20 minutes. Okay. But if you, if you look at like what we have spent, we spent more than one hour already. We spent more than one hour just to teach you the concept of half cell, standard electro potential, all these things. Okay? Because why? It's very important for you to understand it clearly. Okay? You must know this whole thing from A to Z, inside out. You need to know everything. Yeah. All right. Now, let's go on. Huh? So this will be a little bit more to go. Okay, then we will start to do the past year question. Okay, all the standard electrode potential, or we call it E naught value, sometimes they don't cause standard electrode potential, they can also cause standard reduction potential. Huh? Okay, so remember this. Huh? Standard electrode potential, standard reduction potential, E naught value, they are all referred to the same thing. All these values, they can be found in data booklet. So no need to memorize. So don't memorize it. Huh? Okay, so all these values will be given. Okay, you can see all the equation are given. All the value are given. Okay, the, you can see here. So let me clean it first. Okay, so as you can see, the equations are given over here. And then the E0 value are given over here. So you're only, the, the main thing for you is how to use the E0 value. So we will spend two to three lessons just to learn how to use all these E0 values. This E0 value got many usage, many applications. There are so many applications, so many different ways we can use them, okay? But for today, I'll just teach you a very simple thing first. Just teach you a very basic thing first. Huh? All right, so let's look at here. The sign, the sign of E0 value can tell us whether the half cell prefer to donate or receive electron. Because if you look at the E0, they can be positive, they can be negative. Huh? The E0 can be positive and negative. Yeah. So the sign of the E0 can tell us whether they prefer to donate or they prefer to receive electron. Okay. So if the E0 is positive, they love to receive electron. If the E0 value is negative, they love to donate electron. Okay, you don't need to purposely memorize. You don't need to purposely memorize. You can just use a common sense. How to use a common sense? Imagine this is a substance. This is the E0. Okay, if you are positive, you will donate or receive electron. So look at here. This is electron. Electron carry what charge, everyone? Negative. Negative and positive. Opposite charge attract. So they will receive electron. The simple as that. So today, if your E0 is negative, so negative, negative, repel. Negative, negative, will repel. So repel means throw away electron, which means donate, okay? By looking at the E0, you will be able to know your half cell love to donate or love to receive electron. Example, let's look at here. Let's look at here. I use two example here. So let's look at this one. The first one here, what is this? This is AG plus and AG. This is a silver half cell. And this is the silver half cell. So what I know from here, silver half cell can produce 0 0.80 watt. Okay. When you connect the silver half cell to the hydrogen half cell. Remember, if you want to do measurement, you cannot rely on one half cell. If half cell alone, you cannot measure one. Okay, you cannot take a watt meter, measure the half cell like this cannot. You need to take this half cell, connect to the standard hydrogen electrode. Uh, standard hydrogen electrode. I call it SHE, uh, standard hydrogen electrode. So connect this half cell to the standard hydrogen electrode. 
then only you were able to find out the voltage produced by this half cell. Okay. So from here, I know already the silver half cell they can produce 0 0.80 volt. And now I want you to look at the sign <coughs> positive. Positive means what? Silver half cell prefer to receive electron rather than to receive electron rather than donate. That's it. Okay, one more example, yeah. Let's say we go for this one. So what is this? So this is Ca2 plus plus 2E becomes Ca. Obviously, this is a calcium. Eh? This is a calcium half cell. So what I can interpret, what I can know from here. So I know when the calcium half cell produce electric, calcium half cell produce 0.87 watt. Eh? Calcium half cell can produce 0.87 watt. Okay, so this is the amount of electricity that can be produced by calcium half cell. So look at the sign negative. So negative means what? Calcium half cell love to donate electron. Calcium half cell love to donate electron. That's it. Okay. Uh, so the sign is so powerful. It can tell us the half cell love to donate or love to receive electron. Okay. So guys, please let me know. Are you okay with this idea? Okay, good. Huh? All right, everyone's good. Okay, now let's go on with the, with the next one here. Okay, so we can actually use the enot value to decide the polarity of the electrode. Okay, what do we mean by polarity of the electrode? Which means that you can use the enot to decide who is positive terminal, who is negative terminal like this, you see? So you have two electrodes here. So you can decide or oh, this one is positive terminal, this is negative, or the other way around. This is negative terminal, this is positive, okay? So you can use the E-naught value to decide, okay? You can use the E-naught value to decide the terminal, okay? It can be, it must be one plus one minus, cannot be both positive, cannot be both negative, huh? cannot be, it must be one positive, one negative. So how to decide it, I will show you in a short while. Another thing is that you must also know the E0 value can also help us to predict the direction of electron flow. So you, you, then you need to you know electron. Electron always flow in the wire. I want everyone to know electron flow in the wire, not flow in the salt bridge. Huh? Okay. So, so electron is flow on the wire here. So this wire, the electron maybe flow from here to here. Okay. From this part to this part. Or the electron might flow from here to here. So how to know the electron flow from the left to the right or right to the left? How to know? So this is where the E0 comes in. This is why we need to learn the, van, the how to use the E0 value. All right? So how to do it? Okay, how to do it? Huh? Okay. It's very, very easy. Okay. I use some example here first. I use some example and I'll show you here. Let's say, yeah. Huh? Let's say this is the example that I will demonstrate. Okay, so let's say from data booklet, we go to find one of the equation. Okay, I simply take this one, zinc. It can be anything. I take this half equation and I take the E0 value out. Okay, so I want to interpret this whole thing with you together. So first and foremost, I would start to draw and label first. Okay, I'll draw the diagram and label first. Huh? So let me draw. So if I want to measure the voltage for zinc half cell, I need to draw the zinc half cell. And I need to draw the hydrogen half cell. So I draw the zinc half cell on the left. I draw the hydrogen half cell on the right. Again, you can change it. You can draw the zinc half cell on the right, hydrogen half cell on the left. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Huh? It doesn't matter. All right. So remember, connect these two half cell by using watt meter on the top and connect using salt bridge at the bottom. Okay. So now let's do step by step. Okay. So how to interpret. How are we going to interpret? When the zinc half cell is connected to the hydrogen half cell, or we call hydrogen electrode. Okay, you can call standard hydrogen electrode or you can call standard hydrogen half cell. Both are the same thing. Huh? So how much voltage it produces? It produces 0 0.76 volt. Huh? So again, this value, where it's coming from, is coming from data booklet. I don't need to memorize it. Okay. So we, we don't need to memorize the unit, the, the, the number, the number, the value. So this is how we interpret the next one. 
So when I look at negative here, I know already the zinc half cell love to donate electron. The zinc half cell love to donate electron. Okay. So once I know who love to donate electron, I am able to predict the electron flow, right? I will able to predict the electron flow because electron always move from the one who donate to the one who receive, isn't it? Electron always go from the donor to the recipient. Okay, They always go from the donor to the recipient. So in this case, I just need to find out among zinc half cell and hydrogen half cell, who love to donate electron? That's it. Who love to donate electron? That's it. So if you look at the zinc, so it's negative. Negative means zinc love to donate electron. So when zinc love to electron, the zinc will donate electron away. So the electron will go to where? Electron always go into the wire. So when zinc donated the electron, the electron donated by the zinc will go into the wire and move to the other side. So now I already able to predict the direction of electron flow. Okay, so you can see the electron will flow from the zinc half cell all the way to the hydrogen half cell. Okay, so that's it. So lastly, how we decide the polarity of the electrode. Okay, so we have two electrodes here. How to know who is positive, who is negative. This is also a simple common sense. Okay, donate electron is positive or negative terminal. Okay, common sense. Huh? Negative terminal. Okay, positive terminal. Okay. Common sense. So when you donate electron and when you receive electron, which one is more possible? If you are positive, positive attract electron who is negative. So the positive terminal will receive the electron. Negative terminal will donate electron. Why? When this terminal is negative, electron also negative. Negative, negative repel. Then only you push the electron aside you throw away the electron. So that's it. So as you can see here, zinc half cell donate the electron. So zinc half cell is the negative terminal. Okay. So the electron come to the hydrogen half cell. Hydrogen half cell receive the electron. Hydrogen half cell is the positive terminal. Okay. So as you can see over here, my positive terminal, you can write Platinum, you can either write this one because electron go into the platinum. Okay, you can write platinum, or if you don't want to write platinum, you can write the electron come into this entire thingy. Electron come to here. This entire thingy, this entire thingy called what? Hydrogen half cell. Okay, hydrogen half cell. Okay, all right. Or the negative terminal, who don't need electron? This one. The negative terminal is the zinc. So you can write the zinc, this piece first, or this entire half cell. This entire half cell is the zinc half cell. So again, how to know zinc half cell, you should write Zn, then Zn2+, plus, or Zn2+, plus, or Zn. I think I explained to you earlier on, right? Use the data booklet and check. Zn2+, plus, plus 2e becomes Zn. This is from data booklet. So Zn on the left, Zn on the right. So this is how we do, okay? So this is how uh, we're going to write it because I noticed many students, they're able to do it, but they always write it wrongly in the end. Here, oh, they write the half cell ZN slash the N2 plus, then that is wrong really. So these are the basics. Make sure everyone know that. Okay, we are almost done with all the theory already. Okay, we're almost done with all the theory. Okay, up to now. Any question? Are you guys okay? Do you guys understand what we learned so far? Okay, I try to go slow with the intention that you really can understand everything. Yeah, so let's make the final summary. Then we do pass here. Yeah? Okay, the summary. So we already learned the concept. We already learned the concept of the electro potential, but you must know the definition because they love to ask you about the definition of the standard electro potential. So this is one of the very popular question in your A-level syllabus. In A2, in A2, they love it. They like to ask this question. They will ask, what is 
standard electro potential or they will ask what is standard reduction potential or they, they may ask what is E0. So they ask about definition. So this is the definition. You don't need to purposely memorize. It's actually quite easy one. So what is standard electro potential? It is the voltage that you measure. It is exactly the voltage that you measure when you take a half cell, connect to standard hydrogen electrode. Isn't it easy? I take any half cell I wanted. I connect to a standard hydrogen electrode with a voltmeter. I measure this voltage value. So this voltage value will tell me the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, it, should, it will tell me the standard electrode potential. Sorry, yeah? it will tell me the standard electrode potential. So standard electrode potential, it is the voltage that we measure when a half cell is connected to standard hydrogen electrode. And you must mention 25 degrees Celsius, 180 M, and the concentration for one mole per dm cube. Why? Because if you never mention this, it doesn't mean that it is standard. Okay. So when you want to measure the whole thing under standard condition, you need to list out. So some student will ask, can we write this, sir? Voltage measure, blah, 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 blah. Then I write under standard condition. So if I'm lazy, I don't want to list out the temperature. I don't want to list out the pressure. I don't want to list out the concentration. Can I do that? Can, but not advisable. Not advisable. Sometimes in the mark scheme, they are very particular. They want to see these three numbers. So it's always better for you to list out the standard temperature, standard pressure, and standard concentration. So again, the standard temperature, if you don't want to put 25, you can put 298 Kelvin. It's okay. If you don't want to put ATM, you can put 101.3 kilopascal. It's okay. Yeah? You are allowed to do in that way. No problem. Some of the mark scheme, they don't write voltage measure. They write the word potential different. Okay? Potential different, same as voltage. Okay? If you take physics previously, you should have, a, you should have, have some idea. Lah. All right? What is it? All right? So you can write voltage or you can write potential different. Okay? You cannot write electricity measure cannot must write the word voltage or must write the word uh, potential difference only all other words are not acceptable okay that's it all right so with that being said uh, we are all done with the theory part uh. we are all done with the theory part of this lesson okay so we're going to move on to the to the past here we're going to move on to the to the past here so that you have a better idea what to expect. Okay, so let me show you a few questions. Let me show you a few questions. Probably we'll do five questions together, short one, okay, before we end up with today's class. Huh? All right, so let's do this. Okay, let's start from the easy one. Huh? Let's start from the very easy question. Huh? So this is the one, okay? All right. So you can see you have an electrochemical cell, electrochemical cell also known as voltage cell. Or sometimes they don't put the word electrochemical, they also can call chemical cell. Huh? It's the same thing. It's constructed by using two half cells. Isn't it? I say what? Okay, two half cells joined together, you will get a voltage cell. So you have two half cells, one is SN4 plus, SN2 plus, one is AL3 plus, and AL. Tell me the material you can use for the electrode in the half cell. So what is the material? So when you come to your half cell, your material only got two things. It can be a metal or it must be platinum. That's it. There's only two possibility. All right. So the first one. So SN4 plus and SN2 plus. So what is the material we should use? Okay. So as you can see, you have two ions here. When you have more than one ions, you have to go for platinum. Yeah, you have to go for platinum. So next one, AL3 plus and AL. So in this half cell, you only have one metal ion when you only have one metal ion then you use the metal to serve as the electrode are you okay with this so far can you let me know in the chat box are you okay with this so far i for me personally i don't think this is very hard lah. i don't think this is very hard but can you let me know are you okay with this in the chat box okay quite easy isn't it okay by doing this you get one mark so you must get both correct, only get one mark. If only, if let's say one correct, one wrong, you get zero, nothing. It must be both correct in order to get one mark. 
Okay, that's it. All right. So this lower part is the calculation which we'll do in the next lesson. Okay, so we're, we're, not, we're not going to do it for now. All right, so let's move on to another one. Okay, here. All right, let's look at here. So this is another past year question. This is a past year question from May, June, uh, year 2019. This is from May, June, year 2019. So the first question is asking, what do we mean by standard electro potential E0? Okay, how many marks are awarded? One mark, okay. So what is the definition for standard electro potential? Standard electro potential is the voltage. If you don't want to use the word voltage, you can write potential, different, okay. This is the voltage or potential different that you measure. Okay, when you go to take a half cell, when you take any half cell, and then this half cell you go to connect. You connect this half cell to a standard hydrogen electrode. You can use standard hydrogen electrode, or you can say standard hydrogen half cell. Okay, at 25 degrees Celsius, one atmospheric and the concentration, you must go to use one mole per dm cube. Okay, so this is the definition for standard electro potential. Yeah, I don't think it's very hard. Next one, complete and label this diagram to show how the standard electrode potential of Ag plus Ag can be measured under standard conditions. So you want to draw the diagram and you want to label it. So this question, they are so kind, they already draw the first part for you. You only need to complete the whole thing. So before we continue, look at how rewarding it is. It is four marks. Just a drawing, guys. Just a drawing. You get four marks already. That was really, really rewarding, okay? So how to go about it? So when you want to measure the standard electrode potential, you always need to connect the half cell with the hydrogen electrode. So this one obviously is the hydrogen electrode. Why? Because they open the hole so that the hydrogen gas can come in, right? It cannot be silver here because if this is the silver half cell, you have no gas. If you have no gas, you don't need any opening over here, yeah? So this one should be your standard hydrogen electrode. So standard hydrogen electrode, you need hydrogen gas to come in. So draw the hydrogen and make sure you mention it's a gas. Draw the arrow to let it go in. And not to forget to put in the standard constant uh, uh, pressure, 180 m. Eh? So here you have a liquid. So liquid, you must put some dotted line. Hydrogen gas must immerse in hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion is 1 m or you can write one mole per dm cube. Sometimes in the marking scheme, they might not give you H plus ion. They might give you any solution that got H plus ion. So don't be surprised if, let's say, in the marking scheme, you saw this 1M HCl, hydrochloric acid, 1M nitric acid. It's okay because why? Hydrochloric acid got H plus what? Nitric acid got H plus what? It's okay, one. Huh? Don't be shocked when you see that. They can do that. Huh? They can give you that. It's okay. Huh? All right. So next one. So after you completed the hydrogen half cell here, not to forget, you need to draw your uh, silver half cell, your silver half cell. So silver half cell, what should you do? Silver half cell, you have silver ion. So draw a beaker here. And then you have a solution. The solution, you have a silver ion. Silver ion must be in 1M. And not to forget, what is the electrode you should use here? So when you only have one metal ion, you can use the metal electrode. You can use one big pieces of silver or you want to draw a small pieces of silver also can. No problem, huh? right? You only need to use a small size for platinum. Other than that, the other one, you can draw a big one. No problem. Huh? So here, not to forget, you need to connect it. So connect top and bottom. Top connected by a watt meter. Bottom go to connect with a salt bridge. Make sure you label your salt bridge. And one more important thing, not to forget, you need to label this thing. People don't know what is this. So this thing, you label it, put an arrow. So this is a PT, platinum. This is a platinum. Okay, This is a platinum. 
you can write in the words or you can write in the formula platinum okay it'll be even better if the platinum here you go to put a bracket and you put s so that we know this is solid but this is optional even if you don't write the solid is completely fine because obviously this is a solid lah, okay all right so with or without the s is okay lah. so sometimes uh, the marking scheme they label as platinum black you don't you don't care they have platinum black platinum yellow platinum red don't bother just put the word platinum enough already uh. don't bother about the color there and some people they have a shock eh? why they write the word platinum black in the mark scheme it doesn't matter it doesn't matter yeah all right so by doing that okay you already get four marks pretty good yeah pretty good okay very very good and very very easy yeah you see previously born have cycle chapter one so complicated do so many things three marks only this one i not even need to press the calculator i just draw a good diagram with a proper labeling and i get even higher mark four marks so that's why when this kind of question came out in your paper for me uh, it is a free gift so you have to you know take this chance and then grab this opportunity and score okay free gift they give you four marks you have to be able to score it yeah simple as that okay simple as that okay next one use the data booklet to label in this diagram to show me which electrode is the positive electrode and the direction of the electron flow. So let's see what happened here, okay? So how to know who is positive, who is negative electrode, okay? So AG plus and AG. So you go to check the data booklet, AG, yeah? So A, first letter, AG, the value is positive 0 0.80. So from here, you know already, silver love to, Positive means what? Positive means receive electron. Now, when you have positive E naught, you love to receive electron. So, silver love to receive electron. So, when silver receive, the platinum will donate. So, the electron will depart from here to here. So, you need to draw the, the, the arrow here. So, this is where the electron will go. Okay, this is where the electron will go. Huh? So, you, you label the electron flow. So, remember electron flow on the wire, not here. Uh, if you draw the electron flow on salt bridge net, it's completely wrong. Huh? So this is the direction electron flow. So who is positive electrode? So remember, negative electrode donates electron, positive electrode receives electron. So these electrode come to the silver. So the silver is positive electrode. Do you need to label the negative? Don't do that. Don't do something extra. If they never ask you to label the negative electrode or negative terminal, don't do it yeah okay guys can you let me know in the chat box are you okay with this question okay so guys if you're able to draw this diagram with the proper labeling and with this direction and also positive electrode four plus one five marks in total pretty good huh? pretty good yeah all right so this will be the this so and then this is from 2019 huh? okay so now let's go on with one more huh? okay one more question here okay let's move on to here all right this is the one okay this equation representing the standard electrode potential for the reduction of mno4 to mn2 plus in the acid solution given so they give you this equation coupled with the e naught value draw huh? the diagram that can use to measure the E0 value of this half cell. Your diagram should be fully labeled to identify all apparatus, all substances, and all conditions. That's it. How many marks again? Four marks. So this is the question from October, November, year 2020. So you see quite standard, everyone. Four marks, uh? four marks. Very rewarding. So let's draw it. So when you want to draw, you can draw this half cell first or you want to draw the SHE first, up to you. The SHE means the hydrogen half cell, up to you. So let's say I draw this half cell first. So what is this half cell? This half cell got many ion. Huh? So this is called multiple ion half cell. So multiple ion half cell, we put all the ions in the beaker. So remember the ion yeah, in the solution, you need to draw a few dotted lines. We have three ion here, MnO4, H+, plus. without the eight, the eight only for balancing. And then MN2 plus all the ion must be in standard concentration, 1M. Huh? 
MnO4 minus, not to forget the word ion, 1M uh, H plus ion, 1M Mn2 plus ion. So that's it, we're good to go. Not to forget, all the half cell must come along with the electrode. So when we have many, many ion, we use platinum as the electrode. So draw a piece of platinum in a rectangle and then label it. And then a wire, not to forget. Nah. So now we're really done with this. So next one over here, you draw your standard hydrogen electrode. Hydrogen electrode have hydrogen gas. When you have hydrogen gas, you need to draw the test tube, inverted test tube with the opening here. So let the hydrogen gas to go in. Hydrogen gas must be in standard pressure 1 atm. So hydrogen gas must immerse in a solution. So what is the solution we should use? When we have hydrogen gas, we use hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion standard concentration is 1 m. That's it. So not to forget the electrode. So when you have non-metal ion, we use platinum as the electrode. So go up all the way go up all the way. So when you connect these two half cells, we use a watt meter to connect on the top. Then we use a salt bridge to connect at the bottom. Yeah, okay. So by doing that, we will be able to get a good mark here. So four marks. So watt meter, no need to label, but if you feel insecure, just label. Lah. All right, if you feel insecure, just label. Lah. No problem, one up to you. Ah. If you feel insecure, you label everything. Okay, some people, they are so scared, they even label this as bitter. No need lah. I mean, you if you want, can, but you don't need to do that, yeah? But again, if you just feel insecure, just go ahead. It doesn't matter. Because for me, rule of thumb, the more detailed the answer, the better it is, yeah? If you can give a detailed answer, it's always better lah, okay? All right. So we're done, okay? So by doing this with a good diagram, coupled with a good labeling, we were able to get a good four marks here. Like, that's why I say it's very rewarding and it's not very hard to score. Okay, we have two more to go. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is a past year question from October, November year 2017. The first part is the definition, standard cell potential. This one we haven't learned. We only learned this in the next lesson. Huh? So today we only learn standard electrode potential, we call standard reduction potential. Standard cell potential, we will learn in lesson number two of this chapter. So we will skip as per now. Huh? So the first part we skip first. So we directly go on to the second part. So the second part, we want to draw a diagram, fully labeled, to show how to measure the standard electrode potential for the PB2 plus and PB electrode. So include all the necessary chemical. So how to go about it? So this is a metal half cell, isn't it? Because you can see only one metal ion here. Only one metal ion here. So this one should be a metal half cell, okay? So what you should do, so I'm lazy. So what I will do is that I copy paste the diagram that I, okay? So I copy paste the diagram that I draw just now, yeah? I'm lazy, okay? So I copy, paste, and modify, okay, to save some time. Okay. All right. So what are the modifications I need? So in this case, I still have my standard hydrogen electrode, okay? So I want to change the one on the left-hand side here. So left-hand side here, I no longer go for multiple ion half cell. So I need to go for the metal half cell. So for metal half cell, what should I do here? First thing, the electrode, I should use a PB. I should use a lead electrode. So this is a PB. The solution here should have a lead ion, PB2+. Plus. And make sure the ion must be in standard concentration, huh? 1M. Okay, I have 1M here. Okay. All right, so that's it, okay? So you can see the mark were quite standard, lah, quite standard four marks, okay? That's it. All right, so can you let me know in the chat box, do you have any question so far up to now? Have, do you have any question? Based on what we have learned? All right, 
good. All good. Huh? Okay, now let's move on to the last question for today's lesson. Huh? This will be the last question we discussed before we end up with today's lesson. Huh? All right. So this is the one. Okay. Here. Yeah. So this question is... Uh, okay. This question is... Over here. Okay, this, is a, this question is a little bit older, but still very relevant to what you will learn even for today. So this question is coming from May, June. Okay, May, June, year 2016. Uh, year 2016, uh, one of the earlier paper, but still okay, still very relevant. All right. So, so let's look at this. Okay, draw a fully labeled diagram to show how to measure the voltage of a electrochemical cell or so-called voltage cell consists of standard hydrogen electrode and Cu, Cu2 plus electrode. So this is quite easy. Lah. So this one, as you have Cu and Cu2 plus, you only, have, you only see the met, one metal ion here. So you should know this is the metal half cell. So when you look at the equation, you should know already that is the metal half cell, non-metal half cell or multiple ion half cell. You should be able to know right on the spot. Okay, so what we can do is that, okay, I can just copy paste the one we have just now. Okay, this one. Let me bring it back. Okay, this one. We can just copy paste the entire thing, move it forward to here. So I can save a lot of time here. Paste it over here. So the only thing I need to change is what now? The metal half cell I'm using is copper. So I only need to change the metal here with copper and then the solution here with copper ion. That's it. That's the only thing I need to do. Other than that, the, re the, the remaining thing is the same. Okay. And by doing that, I get four marks ready. Pretty good. Pretty easy. Yeah. But again, although it's not too hard, but you really need to understand the concept very well. And you must avoid all the careless mistakes and you need to label you must label it okay because some students they forgot to label the diagram eh? that is something very important that you need to do okay so i think that's it that's everything we learned today so before we end up with today's session so let's do a very quick summary what we have learned today eh? let's let me do a quick recap a quick summary what we have learned today okay so the first thing that we learned today is this okay so we learned about something called a voltage cell. So voltage cell also can call an electrochemical cell or we call chemical cell also can. It's used to produce electricity. Eh? It's used to produce electricity. So voltage cell, when you cut into the half, you will get two half cell. Okay, you get two half cell. Okay. So when you come to the half cell, the half cell have three types. You have a metal half cell whereby you take a metal immerse in a metal ion, okay? You have a non-metal half cell. So non-metal half cell normally come along with gas. So that's why you need a test tube to allow the gas to come in. The gas must come in in one atmospheric pressure, must be. And then here, you must have solution, the solution must have the ion as well. All the ion need to be 1 m, uh, the concentration. Then we have multiple ions half cell. So multiple ion half cell. So we have the beaker, we have a solution, we have many, many ions out there and all the ion must be 1 m. Okay, that's it. And you must be careful with the electrode. Uh. You only use the metal as the electrode if and only if you have one metal ion inside the solution. If you don't have any metal ion at all, go for platinum. If you have many, many ion, go for platinum. Okay, that is very important. So we know that every half cell, they can produce electricity. To know how much electricity produced by the half cell, we need to connect the half cell to standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, always connect the half cell to standard hydrogen electrode. Then you will be able to measure the voltage produced by the half cell. Okay, all right. So this thing must be carried under standard condition, standard temperature, standard pressure, standard concentration. Okay. 
So that is how we do the measurement. Okay? This is how we do the measurement. So the E0 value is all in the data booklet. We don't need to memorize. We only need to look at the sign. So when the E0 value is positive, it means that the half cell love to receive electron. When the E0 is negative, the half cell love to donate electron. By using this sign, we can predict positive and negative terminal in the, in the, in the diagram. We also can use it to predict where the electron will flow, whether the electron will flow from the left to the right or the right to the left. So please be careful, electron flow in the wire, electron flow in the wire, not on the salt bridge. Huh? All right, electron flow in the wire, not flow on the salt bridge. Okay, so this is something that you have to be very careful. Okay, so with that being said, I think we are all done. Okay, we are all done with uh, lesson number one for your A2 electrode potential. Okay, is this is a very a good, a, not so very good, a very tricky chapter, very challenging chapter because it involves a lot of concept. Okay, so today we learned those concepts and we also covered a five past year question together. So hopefully those past year question they gave you some better idea, so that you know how the question can be set up, how they're going to ask you the question, and how are you going to apply whatever thing that you have learned so far. Okay. So I think that's all for today's lesson, all right? So I will see you in the next one.